Hey guys, how does it work? It's not my cup of tea. It's already recording. And what is this? Stop. The rumor says that these lions made the iron parts of the bridge. In fact, the bridge was built in the 19th century, 350 years ago. And uh, it was blown up in the Second World War. And after that, for, uh, after four years, it was completely rebuilt. And uh, now, as you can see, due to the lack of maintenance work, uh, rust corroded iron. And that's how the bridge became extremely dangerous. Hello, this is Professor Kowalski and I will share a few things with you about corrosion on the chain bridge which is a famous Hungarian suspension bridge along the Danube. As you can see there are many signs of rusting, but anyway, what causes rust? To make it simple, in the nature iron ore is connected to oxygen. To make steel we cut oxygen from iron. So what we call corrosion is when oxygen comes back to its old trend, iron. But where exactly do we need iron in a bridge? Of course in handwares and the whole framework, but also parts that we can't see the reinforcing bars inside the concrete. Why do we need them? The concrete has excellent compressive strength. However, it has an undesirably low tensile strength. To counter this weakness, we use reinforcing bars. Without them, the bridge can't support much weight and the concrete could bend or crack. Now you can ask, how can oxygen reach these bars to make the steel rust? The concrete provides a corrosion-free environment for the steel reinforcement. Problems appear because of highway deesers that contain chloride ions which clear the way for oxygen. When it corrodes, it expands. We can see the proof of corrosion in the cracks it causes. As corrosion continues to develop, the delimitation can break away creating potholes. That's how corrosion endangers the car and the pedestrian way along the bridge and of course the whole framework. We can do certain things to prevent it, such as applying protective coatings, but if the maintenance work starts too late, the only possibility is to replace the parts that have become corroded. The Golden Gate Bridge has spanned over the Golden Gate Strait and has provided residents an efficient way to commute between both sides of the San Francisco Bay since its completion in 1937. At the time, it had the largest span of any suspension bridge in the world. This along with its distinctive international orange paint has contributed to its popular the popularity of its colossal landmark. The paint protects the underlying steel from the corrosive salt-rich sea breeze coming in from the Pacific and has been reapplied numerous times over the years. But what exactly would happen if they were to stop? Without the protective layer of paint, corrosion, specifically rust, would set in faster than normal because of the high level of salt in the air, which acts like a catalyst in the reaction between the metal, air, and water. The rusting metal would harbor dangerous bacteria that poses the very serious health risk of tetanus to anyone who cut themselves on its surface. Something as mundane as a hand rubbing against a railing could quickly become fatal.
The truss supports underneath the bridge would weaken over time and could eventually give way. In addition to this, the bridge's roadway was designed to sway and rust would make the cables brittle and weak, making it a very real possibility that high winds could tear it to pieces. Fortunately, the bridge's protective layer of paint continues to be maintained and protects the landmark from harmful, the harmful effects of corrosion, assuring it will be around for generations to come. Golden Gate Bridge is the most photographed bridge in the world. As such, it's been in numerous movies where it has been blown up, destroyed by monsters, and collapsed by earthquakes. But there is one force more powerful than any point of earthquake, more dangerous than the weight of the rush hour traffic and more threatening than gale force winds. That force is... Corrosion. When it was finished in 1937, the San Francisco Chronicle referred to the Golden Gate Bridge as a $35 million steel harp. Each tower alone contains 600,000 steel rivets. Let's see what happens when a rivet is exposed to the salty Pacific Ocean fog. This is a replica rivet from the Golden Gate Bridge. I have sanded the bottom of it to demonstrate the power of corrosion. I put it in a salt water bath to simulate the ocean environment, and as you can see, it has rusted. What causes this? These are iron atoms. These are electrons. In an iron structure, the electrons from the iron atoms are moving around all the time, and this makes cases where you end up with a bunch of electrons in one place and none in another. This creates iron and iron 2 plus. The iron 2 plus will then react with any exposed oxygen to form rust. It needs water to complete this reaction, but when you have salt water, this reaction happens a lot faster. Don't confuse the distinct color of the Golden Gate Bridge for rust. It's actually a paint color called International Orange, and it, along with the primer, helps prevent corrosion. Painting the bridge is an ongoing task and a primary maintenance job. In 1965, advancing corrosion sparked a probe to remove all of the original lead paint. The removal continued for about 30 years. The paint was replaced with a zinc-based primer and acrylic top coat. Then, in the mid-1970s, galvanized bolts became available to replace rusting bolts. Galvanized steel is iron with a thin coat of zinc. Why zinc? Well, zinc prevents corrosion. Zinc carbonate forms an impermeable and insoluble layer, but it's not foolproof. Corrosion is inevitable due to the environment where the bridge is located 